call the meeting to order. Our first piece of business is the minutes of the last meeting, October 20, which were sent out. If people had a chance to review those. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Anything to be said on the motion? Hearing nothing, I'll ask you to vote. Uh, Barry, aye. June, aye. Lane, aye. Karen, aye. Unanimous vote, thank you. <clears throat> um, reports of progress on things. Um, the, um, the bullet house survey is uh, to be done by Tim by early in December and, and uh, Margaret has been <coughs> reminding him on occasion that that's the case. <coughs> he was and, there yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. So glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I was running out. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he knows. That's good. Um, the HVAC uh, system is supposed to be put in on December 10th. We have that as a, a confirmation from Northboro Oil, and they expect to do it all that day, that one day. <clears throat> so that'll put us in shape there. Um, the concept of moving is, uh, I mean, June and I have been talking about it and plotting about some of it for some time, and we'll, we'll start working on packing up some boxes of stuff. Um, we will need more boxes. We've got some stored up there, but we'll need more boxes. And we, what we should do is handle them so that we move a, a bunch of things in the boxes and then bring the boxes back and put other stuff in them for a second move, you know, an additional moving day, those sorts of things. Uh, because we should move it not in one slot, but in uh, three or four slots. Um, <clears throat> and I have moved, I don't know, more than two dozen of those big garment boxes already. Um, I started moving those a, couple, a month or more ago. And uh, so we've already started to put some things there. And I think some of the things that are going upstairs can go in there first because that won't affect the, uh, the work on the, on the system. The big thing is though that we're, it may be cold with the weather this week, it'll be cold in there. Um, and um, so I'm a little bit more concerned about the kinds of things we move in. We might not want to move the photographic stuff in uh, till after we've got the system working. Other than that, that's uh, that's about it on that front, as far as I know. Well, it um, sounds like well, it sounds like a lot of people are willing to help. Yeah, I think we can, <clears throat> and an awful lot of it can be moved with cars and smaller things. The big thing is the is the shelving units and the file cabinets that we need either a trailer or a, or a, or a truck to move. And uh, hopefully we can get some help with that from some of the town departments and perhaps some others. Uh, Lions Club did some help with us the last time. So, it, it, with you the, know, with the coat. A, a pickup or a trail, an open trailer, yes, it'll work fine. Yeah, with the COVID, uh, it's questions from Margaret. Um, what are the limitations as far as number of people and how, how we're going to do this? Yeah, you really shouldn't have more than 10 people at any time um, working on it. So I would suggest, you know, creating schedules. Everyone obviously is going to have to be in a mask at all times. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment as far as the state orders. When we moved the last time, I don't think we had more than six people at a time. Here we go. And that works out pretty well. Uh, you need a couple of pairs of people that can really lug things and some other people that supervise it on either end. And uh, I can't imagine that we'd have more than six or eight people there at one time. Mm -hmm. It just gets too confused and, and messy if you, if you have more. Um, and, it might, and it would likely be some different people different times so that we spread it out that way. Um, Okay. Uh, I 
circulated a draft uh, uh, collection policy last night. I sent it out. I, if you've had a chance to look at it, we can chat about it some. I don't consider it quite done. I'm sure there's something more we need to add to it. And that's part of why we're talking about it now is to see what, uh, what we might, what other people are noting and thinking of that we should add to it. Well, I just found it this morning at nine o'clock <clears throat> when I was turning on my computer. So um, that doesn't give us a lot of time to digest what you've said. Um, I'm not expecting us to approve it or anything now because it's not ready for that. But I do want to be talking about it so we have it in process. And and uh, if we don't, it, there's still room to discuss it and throw other ideas in in the time intervening. And maybe hopefully by next month we can decide we've got a finished thing. Okay. And the um, that's okay. June? Um, one thing um, mentioned in the collection policy is uh, if there's any uh, instructions by the donor yep. for keeping it or not offloading it or whatever. Um, sometimes people will tell us, you know, take it or leave it and they don't care they just wanted us to have a look and and uh, keep it if we want to and that's that's nicely that's convenient do we actually have people that in the past who have wanted us to um, secure something for in perpetuity or i mean if they do i think that there should be some at least messaging that we could certainly use a donation to safeguard um, and and um, not just safeguard, but uh, package it, protect it properly. Oh yeah, the, because these things are expensive, and we don't have a big budget. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a valid thing. <clears throat> I haven't written it in there, but. Uh, it probably should be in there that, you know, we want unrestricted donations um, because uh, you need the, you never know where you're going to be in 20 years or 50 years. And um, sometimes if you end up with six of something, you need to get rid of some of them, obviously. Um, I, I think of the, the bird, the bird card game. Yes. And we have somebody's always finding one of those in a flea market and giving it to us. Uh, it was um, a, a game using cards, like playing, looking like playing cards inside, with pictures of a bird and information about it. And it was something that was uh, designed to, created by uh, uh, Mrs. Dudley, um, who was the teacher for the Lyman School in um, uh, at 19 Lyman Road and in the days the state was running that, that school and she created this game and it says you know Berlin Mass right on it and she sold it she apparently had it and sold it out over, over the mail <clears throat> and the result is there's lots of them around and this forever somebody finding one and, and giving it to us and it's my general feeling is small and we don't worry about it. We take it because you never know what else they're going to find for us. That would be something that we desperately need. But the fact is we probably have at least six of them now. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's a small object, so it isn't a big problem. But at the same time, at some point, we might decide to uh, let some of those go to keep to keep two or three of them that are in the best shape and let the others go. Um, so there are things like that that pop up that we get multiples of. And at some point, it would be necessary to make it a, a, great, a further decision on it. And then you have other things like uh, coming out of the stuff in Memorial Hall, we have two German soldiers helmets made of leather which were brought home as uh, war 
trophies by Berlin servicemen, and we're in the collection of stuff and material, uh, uh, military stuff in the in the uh, Memorial Hall. And so they've been in the town's hands since sometime right after World War One, probably. And uh, at the same time, they're, they're German. They're not American. They're not, you know, the only connection is that something somebody local brought home. And I don't know. That's one of those things that one can make value judgments on. They don't take up an awful lot of space. It's one box. But um, it's one of those things that from time to time we've looked at and wondered just how how much it's uh, it's really germane to our uh, situation, but at the same time, I, I think they're I don't know it's part of the story of World War One, and almost always uh, soldiers come home with military equipment and things from the uh, from the other uh, from the opposing side. So it's uh, it's kind of interesting, and and yet you wonder about it. <clears throat> uh, how much of that sort of thing do we have from from any of the wars? <clears throat> How much of that stuff do we have? Not a lot, not a lot. Uh, we've got one uh, Japanese rifle from World War II, which was bought by Bill Sherman and brought home from, from uh, I guess from Japan. He, um, he bought it uh, and as is typical with things like that, the Japanese, uh, filed the chrysanthemum that was on it, on it off before it was put up and allowed for sale, especially to the to enemy soldiers. Uh, and so um, it, 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 that, that is filed off it in, as an ID and makes it somewhat less valuable as an artifact financially. But at the same time, it's, this, it's the same kind of thing. It's something of enemy equipment that was brought home as a personal trophy. Uh, from the war by a local guy. Uh, we don't have a lot of that kind of, oh, no, we don't not have enough, that. Not enough to make an exhibit of what the soldiers brought home? Well, you could, you could include with it some of their own equipment items that they would have brought home. I mean, the, the gas mask and the, and the uh, uh, personal equipment items that, you know, personal care, what am I thinking about? Toilet kits and things like that that are part of the things that the soldiers would not turn in, but rather bring home, be expected to bring home because the government doesn't want used ones really. Um, so there's a, I mean, there's a lot of small items like that that you could put them in an exhibit with and, um, and show that way. <clears throat> that would be, actually, we haven't done that. Um, we could use some of the same things we used in other exhibits, but put some of those in for a Memorial Day sometime. It would be kind of interesting, things that people brought home. And um, uh, we've got Blinky's, uh, uh, a few pages of diary, a few journal pages that Blinky gave us some years ago. Uh, and perhaps there's something else in the stuff that we got this year from that direction that would be good. And there's, there's quite a few things that we could probably put an exhibit on that kind of a subject, that kind of an approach. And uh, it'd be kind of fun. Um, uh, the um, building permit business, uh, I've had, I had one recently for 107 Coburn Road, which is a relatively new house. I mean, 20 years old or something, I don't know. And uh, they put they want to put a porch in the front of the house, and I let that one go. It doesn't. I, the house isn't old enough to come under demolition delay anyway, and so forth. So uh, that was one I let go. And I just got one in the last couple of days uh, for a building at National Lumber that they want to demolish. I'm gonna. I I suspect it's the same building that we heard about about a year ago and talked a little about, it's uh, uh, next to the big barn uh, up behind uh, Thomas and Joni's house. And um, they, again, they've asked for a permit to take down a building and they've given us nothing to indicate which building it is. Oh. And so we've got to verify that. And I, I, I need to uh, go talk to a few people and see what's what with that. It seems to me 
that they ought to be able to come up with some kind of a plan that would show us which building it is. I'm, I think it's the same one we talked about a, a year ago of back in January. Of, but, but I've got to uh, I've got to find out. It's a different contractor, um, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know any more about it than that. I, I just got that uh, this weekend. Are they putting something else up in its place? I think not. It's it's in a location. I really think a lot of the reason it's being taken down is that it's where they have to make a sharp turn with trucks to go down to the storage area way down back at, on the lower level. And um, I have a feeling that they're taking it down so they can have more room to maneuver around that corner with trucks. But I... Uh, uh, I think that's really the thing that's driving it. But it's nothing, it's not an important building. It's got it's probably built after World War II and has uh, uh, overhead doors in the front of it, a se several relatively small or regular garage door size doors. And it's never been anything but a storage building for stock and lumber and stuff. Um, but I, it, I just, we need to verify that that's what the build, what building it is before I release it. Um, is anybody? Oh dear, I've got myself off. Um, you're on. We can see you. Okay. We can um, hear you. Yeah, I'm just getting myself back on here. Um. I don't know. Are there any other preservation issues or thoughts in that regard? June. I just wanted to put in a, a plea for us to request from the society um, funding for more um, archival boxes and supplies. Um, and maybe soon, um, I mean, we can only do so much every week, but having a few more appropriately sized boxes would help us not duplicate efforts once we get in there. You know, what, what, will, what, can, what will go in there will be in a box that's mostly suitable. Um, yeah, we've used up a lot of material. We've been pulling boxes out of the storage in the bullet house, and um, which is both cleaning out some space there and also getting uh, getting objects into uh, appropriate boxes. And we need to get more of some, some of those sizes we need to get. And perhaps, um, I know the newspaper, I need to, we need to some more newspaper boxes just for some newspaper things. Um, I don't know, um, but we can, I, I don't know why we can't accomplish that. Um, The, the board, of, board of directors can vote up to $2,250, so they can, uh, we can get an order out in that amount to get started with some of that stuff. But we also don't want too much of it right this minute when we're about to move either. Yeah, we just, be easy we just to, need to it have. It might be better to buy them after, we, after we've got the move pretty well done so that we can, um, we don't have to move them that Well, we, we just want, some yeah. so that the things that we know need better packaging will get moved there with with the appropriate boxes not to have a a, a whole bunch that we have to move in addition yeah. uh, uh, i was thinking of the to, artwork uh we should talk about what sizes what things we want to get i know one size that we want um and also check with Edith about that and see what else she's got in her head about uh, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the various sleeves and things. We've been using them up lickety split. Uh, uh, these are the plastic sleeves that you put a photograph in or a newspaper printed article or whatever uh, to protect it when it goes in the file. And we've been using that material up and we need to acquire some more of that too. Um, are there other things that relate to that? 
Another thing that has come up is the uh, the Community Preservation Act. Um, Elaine, I assume you saw the notice and heard about that. Are you willing to continue on that committee? I was just talking about that with Margaret um, when I first got on. That um, it looks it looks like it's not going to take that much of my time, and I will be able to do it full time. So, did you want to make that official? Is there a motion to appoint Elaine to the Community Preservation Act Committee? June. I move that we appoint um, Elaine Wickstrom to serve as our representative on the CPA committee for the town. Second. Second. Anything to be said on the motion? Uh, and I'll call for the vote. Agar I. June I. Karen I. Elaine is going to prefer not to vote or? Right, I'll abstain. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's three to zero and is a vote. And Elaine, thank you very much for uh, taking that commitment. Well, it's quite a, it, it is quite interesting. Um, and the town already has the distribution for this year. Um, it, just, it just went in. Are you, are you with us, Margaret? Your voice yes. is off. Yes. Okay. And um, did you want to give them the exact numbers? Do you, do you have them handy? Uh, for Community Preservation Act? Right. All right. So last year, I, I don't have exact numbers. Um, I can tell you that the 10% disbursements into the required categories, and there are three, historic, open space recreation, and affordable housing, um, the uh, amounts deposited um, from the local contribution were, um, were over $28,000 each. Um, and then we have just gotten the state disbursement. Um, the state's, state's disbursement was almost $200,000. So um, in total, um, in year one, um, Berlin has received almost $500,000 in between the local disbursements and the state disburse or the, the local surcharge and the state disbursement. The state disbursement also has to be divvied up um, according to the 10%, 10%, 10% rule with the balance going in the undesignated um, CPA fund balance. Um, and that could be that undesignated fund can be uh, voted by the Community Preservation Act Committee to go to any one of any one or more of those categories to supplement the existing funding. So, I, while I don't have exact numbers, um, Elaine, I, that should give you a sense right. of <laughs> of um, you know what you're receiving. So you're looking at about what forty, um, maybe forty five thousand dollars to start. Yeah, in in each one. Um, yeah. Um, I think I think we were talking in round numbers um, that night, mm -hmm. and is it my understanding that the first year, because um, we weren't a committee yet, there's no match. So there's money from that year, but we have to do a budget, three different budgets, mm -hmm. to allocate the money. So we have to meet and organize, and uh, this was a kind of a training session for us, and um, very informative. But it, all of the information is on their website. Uh, if anybody wants to mine that. I did mine their website before um, the meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of projects on there that these towns have put in for. It's Some of the towns have been at it for a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, some of them are just coming on board. And uh, But the stuff that they've been able to accomplish is really remarkable. But, oh, you know, no. it, yeah. it is a, a decent amount of money, and uh, but people have to request it and the, the board has to, uh, the committee has to decide. Yeah. And but, then, uh, then the, committee, the committee's decision has to go to town meeting for a general approval. Exactly. But the, um, the money, um, there are some monies that automatically get distributed, you know, to the um, different, like Margaret just said. And um, so it's, uh, you know, you can, you already know there's going to be like fifty thousand um, dollars for historical and for open space and for housing. Um, so, but that money can't be spent. That still has to go through the town meeting vote. Still process. has to go. It's a process. It's all it a process. Be, 
it can be reserved over a number of years and built up right. before it's spent. Right. Um, I mean, I was thinking just off the top of my head, those those three portraits in the town hall, a couple of those could really use some work. We could do a, a, a you know, a painting restoration with some of that, um, as well as, you know, any number of building preservation stuff. I mean, it, some of it could go for town building, some of it can go for other things. And it, it had been my understanding that on occasion it even could go to a private owner for an important historic building. I mean, I, I, I was talking to, when Jane Sawyer was hemming and hawing over the whole thing, I said, well, you know, the store building, which is a big maintenance issue for, the, for her family, I said, that's the kind of thing that if you had a major job to do, you could apply for some of those funds to help. Yeah, there's a lot of guidelines that we have, right. you know, in, in, in deciding, and, and that's what the committee is for. Sure. Um, June? Um, Elaine, when you have time and you've, you know, you've gotten your bearings with the committee, could you um, send us something or send the society, the historical society, something to let us know um, what the guidelines offer to make us uh, make the society a good a good candidate for um, asking for funds. Right. The um, <clears throat> do we? I I didn't check the town's website. Do we have um, any kind of a a blurb on the town's website, Margaret, about the committee? This being uh, uh, no, not yet. Okay. No, not yet. So we can we can put that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And. Um, There'll be a lot of information. Okay. Because they really, they really want you to get the word out. They want you to spend the money, you know, on projects. And um, so, and they want a lot of requests. <laughs> they want everybody, you know, um, who has an idea problems. about what of something that should be done. Um, any citizen can do it. The other thing is, uh, consider things that might be done that would work in more than one of the areas given right uh if you've got a you know if you've got a historic property that could be renovated for housing right. for instance uh something like that could be a project that would use more than one category yeah they could take money from both areas yeah and certainly the same thing would be true for recreation and some of that. I'm sorry. I couldn't. Uh, always happen. Always can happen. Uh, is there anything else we've got for business today? Um, I just wanted to ask you one thing about the curatorial um, stuff you sent us this morning. Yeah. Um, is this is this going to the selectmen when it's all uh, the select board when it's all done? Is that something they asked for? Because they've asked to see it. So yes, it will. Okay. Uh, this is, it's been a lot of the language, especially in those first sections, uh, right out of the historical society bylaws. Right. Um, because, and, and that was uh, at the time that on, on a couple of different occasions when we've had a major revision of the bylaws, it has come to the commission to approve their bylaws and the bylaws are sent to the select men to go in their file. And um, when, when Judy Bowman was working as a uh, senior work off going through select men's files here a while back before she moved away, uh, she pulled one of those sets of bylaws out of there and sent them, gave them back to us. Uh, but I think that there's a more recent one that is still in their files because uh, we would have sent one after we incorporated or at the time that we revised them in order to incorporate uh, between 2000 and 2007. Um, so, I mean, that stuff is, a lot of that has already been in effect before and, and has been informed to the select men before. 
uh, and we, when, when this is done, um, uh, we will, once we've approved it, this will go to the select men too. Okay, um, so can I just ask though that um, when you're working on this, okay, could you send it out to us a little further ahead so that we have time to digest it and we can have a worthwhile discussion at a meeting? Oh yeah. No, before we make a decision, we'll, we've got to get, we have to have more consideration. Yeah. And I hope that, I mean, maybe we can get it done in the next month, but I, the big thing is that we're working on it and we're thinking about it and we're uh, making sure that we cover the bases before we say it's done. The only other thing uh, that I have, and I, I will always keep it on my list, is the Hearst House. Yep. What's um, up with that? We've been busy with other things, but that one is certainly still in our on, on our minds. And and I, what we need is a post hole digger. Hunt for somebody that's got a post hole digger that can dig us three or four foot post holes. Can we ask the uh, highway people? Uh, I don't think they've got one. A post hole digger? They must. Hmm? They must. Oh, they, they must have a post hole digger. I, I can't imagine them well, not having We can check and see that. We can check and see if they've got one. I'll, I can reach out to Dave right now and ask. Yeah. Um, June? You're muted. Uh, June, you're muted. I haven't yet asked Highway if they would move the two toilets in the Bullard House. Um, I think I was uh, not really knowing whether I should email somebody or um, give a call there. <laughs> I wanted I'll to ask do him it that question. I'll ask him that question highway. too. You can email you. Highway at townofberlin.com anytime. I, I can ask Dave right now if you'd like. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> Is there anything else to come before us today? Is, is there anything else in the works besides, I mean, what are you doing about the building itself? About the Hearst House building it, itself? You're gonna dig the post holes and then what's next? I mean, what are the steps? Oh, well, the post holes is, is so we can put concrete in them and, and put stones on the top to set the building on. And that's the main, that's the main thing that has to get accomplished, but we need appropriate holes to get down through the frost layers to avoid frost problems for the for the stones that the building sits on. And we've got stones available. Um, we can go on to uh, pass that. But so that that's the thing that we've got to get done, and in order to prepare it for Tim to work. Do you think they can help us with the whole the whole project in getting it done? Yes, and possibly we'll get some help from somebody else. But yes, and we can get some society people involved too. But uh, the big thing is to get the appropriate holes dug because they're kind of deep. We need them relatively deep to do by hand for small skinny holes. Does anybody have a post hole digger off their tractor? Would that work? That's the kind of thing we need. And and I've talked to two or three people and I've heard other people looking for such things, but nobody has come up with one. One of the okay. things that uh, we had uh, somebody there in the center put in a request on Berlin Neighbors Connect for does somebody have a post hole digger that could dig some holes for me. and so I contacted that person a couple of weeks later and said, how'd you do with that? And they said they didn't get any replies. I, said, Great. I was hoping that would give me a line on somebody to, to, to do it with. But uh, I, I would think the highway must have, I mean, they because they set posts, you know, at intersections and yeah, I don't think they're doing that by hand. Well, we have that request being processed. So we'll see how, we'll see what we come up with there. Okay. Just as long as we keep moving on it. Yeah. Is there something else? If not, I figured this would be short today because we've got those two big projects that are 
hopefully in the oven and and uh, we're waiting for them to get baked. So when we by next month we'll have more on that and we'll also be into the moving. Uh, June. What? You're, yes, you're muted again. again. You're muted. Okay. At the beginning of the meeting, um, someone mentioned that Tim had already visited the Bullard House. Did he have a key or just? Yes. Yeah. We gave him the key when he came. Yeah. The only thing he didn't have was access to a bathroom. And oh. at, yeah, I thought the town hall was open, but it's not evidently. So um, we, he stopped by. I told him, you know, he could ask Dave probably to get a key, you know, for that. I don't know what's going on. I went to the town hall. I saw lights on in the middle of the night, uh, late at night, and I went in to shut them off, and I couldn't go in because they've apparently changed the locks. Mm -hmm. Margaret, do you know anything about their changing the locks at the town hall? Yes, the 1870 town hall manager changed the locks at the town hall because there was um, a lot of unauthorized access going on at the town hall. And due to COVID, they wanted to manage that. So am I going to be able to get a key again for our use for the? Um, I will ask Dave that question too. As our facilities manager, I'll ask if we can get you a key that would be strictly no copies to be made. Okay, yeah. I will ask that question. Yeah, well, yeah. I, we, we told Tim to stop by the highway barn in the morning, you know, if he was coming back today, uh, get a key for that. So okay. I haven't heard any complaints. I don't know what that was. Okay, is there something else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, so moved. Motion to, to adjourn, is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those, uh, and I'll call for a vote. Uh, Agar, I. June, I. Elaine, I. Aaron, I. Thank you all. And we'll bye, bye all have a good day you yeah. too bye bye i'll i'll email you the information from dave once i hear <laughs>